The Lord be with you. Praising God in the best of times and in the worst of times is one of the things that makes our Christian faith unique and makes our Christian faith so needed by a world so torn up by discouraging that stuff right now. Praise becomes a ladder that lifts us up from the middle of hard times to give us a God's eye view on our situation and helps us remember that God will never leave us or forsake us, even when we are called by God to praise God with new songs. Let's worship together. join us in the call to worship and opening prayer. Here today, there is love freely available to all, not our human loving, fragile and intermittent, but God's supreme love. Make a joyful noise to the Lord and all the earth. Break forward into joyous songs of praise. Here today is love higher than our loftiest hopes, deeper than the immensities of time and space. God's inclusive love. Let the seas roar their praise and everything in them. Let the Let rivers, the rivers clap, clap their hands and sing together, together with their happiness. happiness. The joy of the living Christ Jesus be with you all. And also with you. Holy and mysterious creator of the world. Let this day be a worthy celebration of our Lord's amazing love. By the good news of Christ's resurrection, encourage us to put away our worries and discard our fears, so that with minds open to your spirit, we may better love you and more adequately worship in your holy name. Through Christ Jesus, our living Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
prayer of confession and assurance of forgiveness. God gives us the gift of God's time and attention. Let us approach our Redeemer with a humble and honest confession. Holy God, God, we we confess confess our discomfort discomfort with uncertainty. uncertainty. We confess confess our our desire desire for personal power power and and our our desperate desperate grasp for control. control. We confess confess our our need for everything everything to make make sense. sense. And yet, yet, great great God God of mercy, there is so so much much beyond beyond our our understanding. understanding. Remind Remind us we are are human. human. Humble us in your presence. Help us rest rest in the faith that your grace is sufficient. Amen. God's grace is given freely. God's love is steadfast. Receive the good news that you are forgiven and live in freedom from sin to the glory of God. Amen. prayer for illumination. Open us, Holy One, to your word and your way. Clear our minds of daily distractions. Fill our hearts with the humility we need to hear and receive the message you intend for us today. Amen. Amen. The first scripture reading is Matthew 6, 21 through 34. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. Therefore, if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how terrible that darkness will be. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate one and love the other, or you'll be loyal to the one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life what you'll eat or what you'll drink, about your body or what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather gather crops into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you so much more worthy than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about your clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work. They don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor wasn't dressed like one of those. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into a furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost, God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its enough trouble of its own. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on. <laughs> Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity. Giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory. Maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your worth. King over all the universe, to you be the glory. 
And I am alive because I'm alive in you. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raises dead men's life. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. I'm alive. Giver of every breath I breathe, author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory. Maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your worth. King over all the universe, to you be the glory. And I am alive because I'm alive in you. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raised this dead man's life. It's all because of Jesus and every sunrise sings your praise. The universe cries out your praise. I'm singing freedom all my days now that I'm alive. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because the blood of Jesus Christ that covers me and raised this dead man's life. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. And thank you, Forrest. I would like to have the kids come join me. We have Eli and we have Will and CJ and of course Miss Kiana and Miss Priyana are going to join us. And we're missing Kingsley and Emmy and Caroline and Bennett, but they are in our hearts. Who else? Are we Aaron and Andrew? All right, friends. We're going to talk about God math. God math. How many of you guys like math in school? Okay. Well, God math is not like school math. Okay. See, I have four corners, right? On this paper. And if I try to give away this, this paper could be my time. It could be my kindness, my privilege. It could be money. It could be helpfulness. It could be all kinds of things that God gives me to take care of. And if, if I listen to God and God says, you need to give some stuff away, I'm going to try and get rid of a corner. So here we go. Here, Eli, you can have that corner. Okay. Oh, man. One, two, three. Now I have more corners. I'm going to try again. Here, Will. Okay. Okay, now. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, five, six. I'll keep trying because I'm going to see if I can give more away. But I keep ending up with more corners. I, I see a pattern here. Do you guys? It, it is. It's kind of a hexawatigon right now. We don't. Um, so the whole idea is that when we give what God gives us away, we end up with more to give away. It's God math. It's different than our math. So I want to challenge you all today to see if you this week can give something away from your hearts and end up 
with more and you can come tell me about it this week, you can email me, you can text me. I know you all have parents who know my number. Let's say a prayer together. What? You don't have a phone, but you know what, CJ? I know your parents and I know they have me in their phone. So, so I, I'm, I dare you to try and text me. I bet they'll let you. Let's say a prayer. Generous God, thank you for giving us so much. Help me to be generous like you are. Amen. All right, y'all go have fun. Will's out there going, can I get this away, please? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Psalm 98, verses 1 through 4. It's going to be a new song, part 1. Part 2 is next week. Sing to the new Lord a new song because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy. Rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. This is the word of the Lord. So let's look a little more closely at verse one. Sing to the Lord a new song because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. Y'all, God's people have always sung new songs. God's people have always found new ways to tell about the wonderful things God has done. Through exile, Seeming defeat, persecution, war, natural disasters, plagues, the unthinkable. God's people have used songs to remind ourselves of God's goodness. Why do we need to sing new songs? What's wrong with the old ones? Because in addition to reminding ourselves about God's past goodness, we need to lift up and sing about the new things that God is doing among God's people. And if I know anything, I know this. God is teaching Southminster new songs. Because God is up to some amazing things in our small but mighty church. New things that tell old truths in new ways. New things that bring God's good news to a new generation. Because ultimately, our psalm tells us, God will have the victory. But what does that mean? Most of the time in our thinking, if there's a victory, there's a victor. That also means there's a victim. If there's someone vanquished. Our logical minds tell us if there's a winner, there's got to be a loser. And then we struggle, don't we, to reconcile God's victory here with God's redemption, ongoing redeeming of all things in Jesus Christ. So what do we do with that? Well, we go back, and you all know how much I love Hebrew. Um, God tells us in the Hebrew something very different. The Hebrew word for victory used here doesn't carry that winner requiring a loser connotation. The Hebrew word here is yasha, and it means deliver or free. So if we nuance words like victory and triumph to something closer to the original Hebrew, they mean something like all things are thriving. All communities are flourishing. Well, then that makes more sense about why we might burst into song. So yes, we're figuring out new songs here. Our services have been long lately, but that's because we're figuring out a new song together for love of one another. 
We are incorporating conversation and prayer requests into our worship time. It kind of takes a long time sometimes. We're figuring it out. Because what's really cool here is we have this quirky congregation full of boomers and millennials and a few of us Gen Xers in between, a few Gen Zers. Where else are you going to find those people talking to one another, solving problems together, praising God together, praying for one another? See, sometimes we don't get one another, but you have shown again and again and again and again that you are willing to love one another and figure this out. So we may dance to this new song a little clumsily, and we may have a hitch in our giddy up, but God is helping us write a new song for Southminster. What might victory look like for God's people in a world that is so drastically changed over the past few years and was already changing fast before that? At the time the psalmist wrote this, it might have been like some kind of military victory that that assured people, God's people, the ability to live safely with stability. But now, what if now is some creative solutions to some complex situations right here, all led and inspired by the Holy Spirit? Looking at verse two, the Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. So a big part of our job is to invite others to be a part of this family, to let those who don't know it yet know they are loved as they are. That life is better lived in a community who loves one another and prays for one another and helps for one another. That, that we can help a lot more people when we pool our resources and our energy and our efforts than any of us can do alone. Yeah, we have such amazing opportunities to do that right here. We have a location. Did you know that 100,000 people every day drive past us? Uh, that many people see our sign every week. During the pumpkin patch, the times I was out there, and I think those of others of you who were out there can say, so many people said, oh, I love your sign. I look forward to it. What an incredible opportunity to reveal God's righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. My personal favorite, well, I have two favorite signs we've had. I bet you have some favorites too. One was, I will always love you, Whitney, Dolly, and God. Loved that one. And then one that I'm going to call Jen out. Jen put out there that said, my problem is that I want to follow Jesus and slap people too, but God loves them. <laughs> that, you know, if we can make somebody smile and look forward to something bright, that's pretty cool. This location, so unique, so wonderful. Do you know that if we drew a one mile circle in every direction around our campus and we look at the demographics, it is all residential, mostly two career families, lots and lots of little ones, the diversity over on that side of Harding, we have these lovely Kurdish neighbors. Over on this side, we have Creve Hall with this hugely active association, Caldwell Abbey, Abbey Hall with its active association. But you know what? The sense of isolation among young families was a problem before the pandemic. More and more of the folks right around us are struggling with loneliness. So many of these people don't know that God loves them just as they are. They don't know that there is a community right here where they are welcome to come figure it out and be clumsy figuring it out with the rest of us. So many of the people right around us have been deeply hurt by the church because they ask questions, because of who they love, because of struggles they've had. 
they don't know there's a place here that would welcome them with open arms. We have so much to offer them, a place to find community, a place to be a part of something bigger than they are, a place to learn that God's love is freeing, that God's love invites them to be a part, um, to be more truly themselves, that being a follower of Jesus leads to a victory of that Yesha type, being delivered from what oppresses and freed from what enslaves. Then, okay, we talked about that one mile circle. You go just outside that circle, especially to our east. We have the eyes of the nation right there along Nolensville Road. And their needs also, they of course, they have needs to belong and to thrive and all that, but they have some other more concrete needs. Needs for welcome and understanding. Needs for opportunities that might give them a boost in a country that is new to them. What an amazing location we have to have all that right around us. Verse three, God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel and every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. Now, when it says God has remembered, it doesn't mean God got distracted and forgot. It means God, it's a poet's way of saying God never forgets God's loyalty. God never forgets God's faithfulness to God's people. In other words, even when the situation on the ground looks like defeat is imminent, God's not done. God is at work bringing about deliverance from all kinds of oppression. God is at work moving towards the thriving of all God's creation. We serve a God of resurrection, y'all. And I love how the psalmist says that every corner of the earth has seen God's salvation because it reminds us to figure out how to proclaim God's salvation on this corner, to be a place of light and love and joy on our corner. This corner we've been given to safeguard and steward and use to God's glory. Verse four is our final verse for today. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Be happy. Rejoice out loud. Sing your praises. Now, we Presbyterians aren't exactly known for our shouting and rejoicing out loud. We take that whole decent and in order thing pretty seriously. There are churches where there is a lot of shouting in worship. And in meetings, I don't think that this psalm is saying to us that we have to start looking like that because we wouldn't be truly who we are. And God never asks us to not be more truly who we are. But we can find ways to rejoice, be happy, and let the world know the good news we have to share. In a world where so many churches are scorned by so many because they are talking the talk and not walking the walk, we've got a lot going for us because we are having some hard conversations about what it means to be church now. What I see is a church willing to laugh at itself, willing to let our flaws and our failings be learning opportunities, willing to learn what it means to be in be the church in a world so different from the one of just a few years ago. But what might it look like for us to shout triumphantly to the Lord and to rejoice out loud? Well, I've mentioned our sign and our location. Those are some great ways to shout triumphantly. We've got some things on the horizon that will let us do that. Our wayfinding team has been hard at work. I wanted so badly this morning to come and say, guys, 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 here's what we got going on. But I was told not to by the consultants we hired. So, you know, that's why we hired them. So I can't say that yet. But there are two possibilities, really exciting ones. And a third one has just become evident. And you know what? Because of the resources we've been given, we can do all of them. Probably not all at the same time. 
but what might look like nothing, stuff we've taken for granted, our unused land, our empty manse, our childcare center that we might think of as using all the space it can. All of these things can become part of how we shout the good news into this world. They can all be used to more thoroughly, more deeply share God's church on God's mission right here. Y'all, we have a new song. To, we have a lot of new songs to sing. Some years ago, I'm thinking it's about nine years now, maybe 10. Long before I got here, this church began to wonder what it might look like to be on this corner in new ways. There was talk, should the church shudder? Should it sell out and shut down? A lot of small churches are doing that right here in our presbytery. I sit on the committee on ministry and it seems like every month we are having that conversation about another tiny church that wasn't willing to have those conversations. And it's heartbreaking. But y'all, as you prayed, you became convinced that God was not done with this corner, that there was still a place for a reformed Christian witness right here in South Nashville. I promise you it doesn't look like what any of y'all imagined at this point, but who could have foreseen the last three years? Doors are opening. Opportunities to make a real difference in the lives around us are becoming available. Be assured of this. Our understanding of the gospel, our reformed and always reforming approach to Christian faith, that's not going anywhere. Worship is not going anywhere. Gathering for worship together is the through line. It's the rhythm. It's the basic melody of this new song that we are called to sing. This is a psalm that calls us to praise, to praise out loud and enthusiastically. To praise with the new song that God is giving us. As I said in the beginning, praise is a spiritual practice that can become a ladder to lift our hearts when things are hard. Praise is a habit that can lift our eyes from our present circumstances when those circumstances are bleak to remember that God does not forget God's people, that Jesus is still in the business of redeeming and reconciling all things. The church was made for times like these. Times when new ways of telling God's love are needed. Times when we need to lift each other up. Now more than ever, we need to keep praying for God's path for Southminster to be both clear and blessed. Now more than ever, we need to be the church. The church was not made for the easy times. The church was made to give God's people a way forward in times of difficulty and struggle. This psalm wasn't written for when the way forward was glaringly obvious and easy. It's an exhortation to praise God because God is faithful no matter what. If you remember, it's been a little over a year since we began wondering and praying together and imagining what could happen here on this, in this campus of ours that would be both faithful to who we are and whose we are, and also be a better use of our land and our buildings. We then contracted with ministry incubators to help us discern those possibilities. They are putting us in touch with ideas and resources and people that are helping us to re-envision what could be. Y'all, we are dreaming some big dreams about what is possible. There's some, as I said, I really, really, really wanted to come tell you about it, but I was told in no uncertain terms that it is not time. So I'm sorry. So all of us as a community, we need to share our time and our treasure and invest our mission as a church prayerfully, faithfully. Now more than ever, your generosity with time and energy and finances will make a difference. In a season that is 
full of difficulty and despair for so many around us. We are a community of light and hope. In a time of injustice and struggle, we are a community of love and justice. In a time of silence and isolation, we are and can be a community of gathering, of song, of new songs and new ways of singing, new ways of being God's church for God's world. I apologize to all of our visitors because this is the stewardship sermon, but here we go. Early this week, you'll receive a letter in the mail with a pledge card. And next Sunday, we want everyone to bring their pledges to church to ask God to bless the tithes and the offerings and the gifts that we bring during our worship service. And we will use those tithes and offerings and pledges and gifts to help South Minster sing a new song. A new song about what is God do, what God is doing, has done, and will continue to do on our small corner of God's world. Amen. Now you'll notice in your program that there is um, there are questions for reflection and conversation. That's because I'm an airhead and forgot to take that out because it is a communion service, and we on communion Sundays. Do not have that conversation time. So please read those. And I invite you to um, discuss them with one another and discuss them after the program that Kiana has planned for us. Um, they, I worked hard on them, y'all. You know? <laughs> so anyway. So when the psalmist imagined the world giving praise to God, the psalmist imagined each thing praising in its own way. The sea roaring, the earth breaking out into harmony, the waves of the ocean clapping against the shore. Each thing does what it does in its own way to praise God. And the people, the people do what people do. They raise their voices in song and they make music with harps and horns and everything they've got. But that's not all that people do to praise their creator. We don't just make music for God. We imitate God as well. And for Christians, the thing that God is best known for is love. A love that pours itself out in generosity and grace. There are lots of ways to imitate God in that. One of them is a time we take every Sunday to think and plan and scheme with the Holy Spirit to get up to holy mischief in how we might be generous with our time, our love, our words, our gifts, and yes, our finances. There's an offering plate at the front. There's a QR code in your program. And we would welcome you to support the financial operations of Southminster as well. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the chance to try to outgive you in all the ways that you give so generously to us. Give us wisdom, boldness, joy, and song as we do so. Amen. Please stand for the doxology. <laughs> Please be seated. This is the time, friends, when we bring our um, prayer requests to the Lord and to one another. 
And I invite you, uh, let's go first to the folks on Zoom. Jen, would you just tell us who is here on Zoom? Sam and Mary, we're glad you're here. Uh, Nancy, wait, Steve and Sharon? Sharon. Sharon, okay, hi, Sharon. <laughs> Say it again. Lori. Lori, hi, Lori and Nathan. Bill and Pam, hello. And Judy, we're glad you're here. Are there any prayer requests from our Zoom family at this time? Judy. Yes, I have a prayer request. My sister-in-law's sister, Bev, lives in Florida, and she has had two heart attacks this year, and she has just found out that she has tongue cancer. Oh, no. So she's going to either, there's a lot of options, none of them are good, uh, yeah. partially remove her tongue or totally remove her tongue, which she'd never be able to talk again or, or eat normally again or partially and then have a reconstruction. So she's mm -hmm. got some options to figure out and she's a widow. And so her sister, my sister-in-law in Michigan is trying to decide when she should go down there, if she should go down there, if she needs her. It's, and she can't talk to her on the phone because she can't speak. It's mm. just a real difficult situation. So Bev, I don't know her last name, but Bev is her first name. All right. Thank you, Judy, for bringing Bev to our attention. Are there others on Zoom? No others. And Bethany's going to do her, her Phil Donahue act. Um, are there prayer requests here in the sanctuary that we can lift up together? We need to keep Nancy young in our prayers as she is still in rehab from her surgery and fall and apparently is doing well from everything I hear. Forest. Forest. Yes, sir. I get it. <laughs> yes. Uh, prayers for my friend, Corey. Um, he something just happened between him and his parents and it's basically a critical mass. Okay. Um, so yeah, just prayers for Corey, please. Corey has worshiped often with us here. We will lift him up in prayer. Are there others? Greta. If you could please still keep Don in your prayers and his wife, Marlene, he's still not doing well. They're still hopeful, but it's, he's not getting any, but he's not getting worse, but he's not getting any better and still on a ventilator. Okay. And also um, prayers for Tuesday and Wednesday that everything goes smoothly, that cooler heads prevail and that we don't have any violence. Yeah. Amen to that. Are there others? Emily. Uh, someone very close to me is struggling with addiction right now. I'm sorry. So, sorry say that again. Uh, someone very close to me is struggling with addiction right now. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for bringing in. For my friend Dana, who is um, so worried about so many people that she loves, uh, four of them all have cancer, and uh, her sister in law, uh, I had a bad report from her. Um, from the doctor and is going this next week to see what can be done. So for all of those people in every, every direction, Sandy Mesner mm -hmm. and thankfulness that there are medical issues that can help people with cancer. Um, Mark and I learned this week that, um, Samantha Moore, who is the wife of Ryan Moore, they direct our camp at Nokomi. Um, she is just starting a battle with breast cancer. And they, I think Benny, their little one is like, I think he's not quite two yet. And um, since they, they're kind of all of us, all, they belong to all the churches, we need to be praying for Sam and Ryan in that. 
Are there others? Barbara. I think you could have the world map and put your finger anywhere on it and there's something bad going on. So we need to pray for those people. Yeah. That's a very good way to put it. Spin the globe. Okay. The others. All right, let's go to God in prayer, and then we will move to our time of communion. Um, before we do that, let me say clearly we practice a radically open table here. All are welcome at our communion table. And um, we take by intinction. We also have self-contained wafer and juice, if that is more comfortable to you. We also have wa uh, gluten-free wafers, um, and we ask that the folks who need gluten-free come first so that none of the gluten messes with you from folks coming after you. Let's go to God in prayer. God of glory, we behold your creation with wonder. We blossom under the nurturing care of your love. As a stream carves a path through rock, your spirit guides us through the rough and confounding patches of life. There's so much we don't understand, God. So many questions for which we seek answers. We are grateful for your presence, for the audience you grant us, and we ask, seek, and knock at your door. In this time of prayer, grant us your wisdom and your grace. The images of Ukraine continue to devastate us, God. Vindicate those who have lost everything to the evils of war. Redeem and restore the lives of the innocent. We see, too, the women of Iran protesting their restrictive lives, storming the streets despite the risk. Mothering God, protect these women who have had enough, who boldly question the unquestioned and who risk everything for the sake of freedom. God, we see when we know that you see and have heard this morning the longings of love for those known to us, for Judy's sister-in-law's sister, Bev. There are no good options, and we pray that you would be a voice for the voiceless and give wisdom in that situation. We lift up to you, Nancy, as she recovers, and Sharon, as she misses her mom. We lift Forrest, friend Corey, all of our friend Corey, up to you that, that peace might come in his relationship with his parents. We join Greta in praying for Don that he might get better, that he might be free from the ventilator. We lift up our own community, Lord, in our own country as we face elections that have gotten no less divisive in the past few years, and we ask that your peace would prevail. We lift up Dana as her heart aches from so many people she loves, struggling with such terrible illness. We ask that you would be with Sandy for all those we know and love facing medical illnesses and miserable treatments, including Sam Moore. And Lord, we thank you for the medical resources we have and the incredible treatments. Lord, we join with Emily in lifting up her friend with addiction. Pray, Lord, that your love might shine bright into that situation and make a way forward clear. And Lord, as Barbara said, any place on the world map where we might stop our finger, there's strife and struggle. And we ask God that you would hear the cries of your people and come to the aid of your children. Steadfast God, you sent your son to live among us to suffer as we suffer. We know you hear our prayers for the sick and the grieving, for the victims of violence, for the lonely, the tired, the overwhelmed, and the frantic. We know, God, that you know the plight of the poor and the unhoused, the hungry and the marginalized. We know, Lord, you are very present to the dying, the despairing, and the desperate. Help us, holy God, to be here too, to be your hands and feet to be your witnesses and bearers of your good news. Amen.
Who is invited to the Lord's table? All who are beloved by God, so all of us. All of us are welcome and all of us have a place at this table. All of us have an invitation, an amazing invitation to a feast, an invitation to find our place at Christ's table alongside the other unworthy ones, the other beloved ones, the others humble enough to accept the invitation without asking who else will be there. Well, Jesus, Lord of the feast, with thankful and open hearts, we accept your invitation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. That is so right. Giving God our thanks and praise is the best thing we can ever do. So let's do that together in prayer. God, you created everything. Every living thing was put on earth by you and all people of every nation belong to your loving heart. So together with all creation, everything on earth and in heaven and beyond the heavens, we give you praise and join in with the world's eternal song of praise. Holy, holy God of hosts, heaven and earth sing out your name. Blessed are they who come today. Are continually amazed by you. God, you are amazing, and so is your Son, Jesus Christ. Through your holy plan, Christ's birth and death and resurrection, your church was born. You save us from the power of sin and eternal death, and you make a new agreement with each of us through baptism and the Holy Spirit. God, Christ sent us to tell the whole world about God's love, and now we, the family of Jesus are joining together at Jesus's holy table. As a way to remember Christ's perfect love and life, we happily and thankfully give you back our lives today as holy living sacrifices. Receive this gift of our lives together with Christ's gifts for us as we sing the truth about our faith. ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on each person here and on these gifts of bread and juice. By taking them into our bodies, we somehow become more surely the body of Christ for the rest of the world. Renew us. Help us remember that we are Christ's church. Strengthen our faith and our service so we can faithfully show and tell the world how much your love can do. Use your Holy Spirit to make us one with Christ and with each other. Help us to care for the world until Christ comes again. And we all join around his table as a family in perfect love. We lift our voices together in the prayer Christ taught us, saying together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Forever. 
2,000 years ago, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples in an upper room. He took the bread at that meal and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, at the end of the meal, Jesus took the cup and he gave it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take all of you and drink it. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you celebrate my life, my death, and my ministry until I come again. Friends, beloved family of God, all is prepared. Let us take and eat and drink. And again, those who need um, to have gluten-free wafers, please come first. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
while we sing the last hymn, we'll let the kids come take communion as well as Kiana. <laughs> Please stand. Well, CJ, this is the body of Christ and the cup of salvation. We shall will. go out this with joy the body of and be back forth and the with cup peace. of salvation. The mountains and the Fly. Yes, just a minute, wait till they'll be shot. Got it? And all the trees are this is a good bread of life and a cup of salvation. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And the cup of salvation again. The field will clap their hands. The trees of the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We have a policy that when a child wants more Jesus, they can have more Jesus. Yes. <laughs> so God is love and God is grace. God pours out love and grace upon the world. And with God's help, we mean to do the same. So go now, good people. Clap, sing, give everything you've got together for joy. In the name of God, the creator, Jesus, the redeemer and the Holy Spirit, our sustainer. Amen.